Welcome back YouTube, welcome to another video. You might have seen in the entire order, I'm throwing the towel in. Um, don't worry, I'm not throwing the towel in on the car. Um, it's just a water to air cooler. So, you know I've been trying for a long time, trying to get the water to air cooler from word go, Nick, the tuna. He said straight away, it's not good enough. Um, it's not efficient enough. I couldn't really be asked to redo it. I said, what about adding meth? He said, you're trying to put a plaster on a problem, which I agree with. But I still did it anyway, because it was getting, it, it was getting like midway through the summer. I wanted to get the car, I wanted to get out there. Um, so I've been using the car, it's been all right. Uh, well, it's been, it's been good to be fair. Um, but what it was, took it, took it drag strip. I was trying to get a 10 second run. Uh, launch control weren't working properly. Um, Kip's getting stuck. Um, so I managed to do an 11.2 without launch control, um, which was better. It was yeah, beat the personal best, but I still didn't get the 10 second run. Had little problems with the IETs again. So it's all right at first, but once it starts to warm up, I can't cool that water down without driving and getting some flow to it. The problem is when you're at the drag strip, you hit the end of the strip, you come back round, you're in a car park, um, can't get the flow there. I could, you could put fans on and stuff like that onto the heat exchanger at the front, but it's, it's just hassle. Um, so I come back from there and I thought, um, a company I've dealt with before, they've just got a four wheel dyno. So I says, let's take it down to the dyno, let's see what it's running. So I get there, run it on the dyno, it made high four something, when in reality at 21 PSI, we should be up to about 600 brake, ran high four something. So I said, no, something's not right there. I pulled the bonnet, water to air intercooler is red hot. The pump's blown the fuse and melted it a little bit. Now it's only a four amp fuse and my theory behind it is my reservoir is that small. I think when it's hitting peak boost and it's getting hot, I don't think it's got any room for the water to expand and then the pump is struggling a bit because obviously a four amp fuse, it's obviously not, it's obviously the pump's meant to free flow and not meant to hold, fight against pressure as such. So, it got really hot. I put the new fuse in for the pump and it seemed to circulate. Checked all the wiring, looked all right. So we ran it on the dyno again. The water was still quite warm. And again, without driving it loads again, it, 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 it weren't working properly. Um, we ran it again, it made 500. Ended up speaking to Nick Batuna. I said to him, look, it only made 500. It should be about 600. And he basically said, like, he's put no timing in at all because he was constantly worried about my IATs being too high. So he's put no timing in, he's made everything ultra safe, he's put loads of um, fail safes in place so it pulls it and stuff. So basically it just comes down to the fact that the IATs are just getting too high so he don't want to push it. So he says with, with the safeties in place and the water being that hot and then the fact that he ain't ran no timing, he says that could be, that, that's the majority of your problem, that's the distance between when it made, because if it was cool line, it was working, I took it for a drive, it would have made like over 500. Plus the dyno I went on was meant to be quite a strict dyno, so the dyno is quite strict. He said there's a lot of other dynos, it probably would have read even more. So with the dyno being strict, the water being hot, and the fact we ain't running no time of safeties, that could basically make up your 100 brake horsepower that you lost over the 600, so. I looked a little bit into getting a different core and then I'd need a bigger reservoir, but then I'd have to put the reservoir in the back, in the, in the boot basically. Um, and then you probably need an extra pump as well to circulate. I just started getting a foot, you know what? I tried, I tried to do the water to hair thing and I've seen a lot of people with like Mark II Golfs and stuff, they do it and theirs work, but they can fit a much bigger core on, under, the, under the bonnet. Like, this is one of the biggest problems is your, your fuse box. I looked into moving that, you have to chop every single wire and then you'd have to relocate it like into the passenger footwell or something like that. I'm, I'm not doing all that, I can't go after all that. Um, another negative as well, I've, I've always had my air filter, what you've seen if you've watched my previous videos, that the air filter has always been directly on the turbo and that was purely down to the fact that because the water to air cooler was there, I just could not fit um, a proper intake in. I just couldn't fit an intake in, so, with all that being said, I've just decided I've took it off. I've binned it all off. I'm just going big air to air cooler. I just can't be asked with the stress no more. Uh, there was a couple of other things as well. If you've seen about my temp problems before, originally we had the my inlet manifold came with the with basically the form for uh, intake air temp sensor to go into it. So 
a load of people told me about the heat choke problem and stuff so we did move it and it was basically then moved to this part here but it weren't in a perfect location because it was right above the blow off valve now the tuner, my tuner said essentially it shouldn't cause a problem as long as your blow off valve is closed when it's idling which it was but still it's not ideal again we had the meth nozzle it, again it wasn't in the ideal location because you all end up being afterthoughts and my boost location was quite short because it came straight out um, the intake air temp sensor there was nearly hitting the fan with the wire when it came out. The, the meth weren't in the ideal place. There's just so many things weren't in the ideal place as well as it not being that efficient. That if I go air to air, it's going to be a pain doing all the part work and redoing everything. But I'll be able to put everything in, in the location because I'll still put the meth back. Because it's all I've got to do is extend the pipe, put the nozzle somewhere else. So the meth, the intake temp sensor and the blower fiber now will all now be in what the ideal location I think depending on the setup and where I go um, I haven't ordered an intercooler yet I want to get some stuff done um, and then work out kind of what size but I'm going to go for the biggest one I'm trying to go for something not too ridiculously expensive but something with a half decent car I don't want to just go for a generic eBay one so I'm trying to get something like in the, in the mid range somewhere and then just going to obviously going to have to pipe it all in um, and do and do a proper intake so it is going to have like a cold fit forward cold feed intake that comes actually round so it's not sucking in the hot air because that didn't help in the first place it's sucking in hot air from round the back and then when you've got a water to air cooler that ain't as efficient as it should be i mean you start things start rolling and before you know it it's causing those problems so if i get a cold air intake a big inch cool lot and everything parked in the right location then we should just be able to go like all out um and I'll probably run even more boost as well. Probably going to be somewhere between six and seven hundred brake um, crank. That is. Um, also, from last time I spoke to you, it's got the TVS Stage Four on it now as well. On the gearbox, the gearbox is miles better. Um, but again, the gearbox was getting a little bit hot. So I want to take you through that as well because there's something else I'm changing. So. When I first built it ages ago, I had a, a DSG oil cooler. Now the problem was with the DSG oil cooler, um, when I was trying to do basic settings, it wouldn't go through the basic settings because the gearbox wasn't warming up. Because although you use the heat exchanger, which is meant to cool it, it also heats the oil up, so it gets the oil up to like full operating temperature quicker because the coolant runs through it. So as the engine coolant warms up, it warms the oil up in the gearbox. And then when it starts getting hotter, it's meant to bring it back down. So I ended up taking it back off because I couldn't warm it up enough, and I put the heat exchanger back on. But then I put what I put back on was I put this auxiliary. This is on, on a Mark V. This comes as standard. It goes around there, and it goes. It's to do with like the heat exchanger, to do with the engine oil and stuff. Obviously, I switched over to this one, so I didn't need it no more. And I've got the. Uh, the, the oil cooler here and it's got that one's thermostatic as well um, so I've got the thermostatic oil cooler already so I, loads of this coolant part work went away and I ended up with this pump um, so I basically used this pump to come off where we went we came off there so we came off the, the bottom radiator hose should be the cold uh, the cold feed for the, the cold return as such after it's been through the radiator so we basically I mounted this on the front of the gearbox sump and it basically came off off here and went up and round so it went to the heat exchanger and then obviously it comes out the heat exchanger and returns back to one of the heater hoses um which i tried to use to cool it a little bit but it's still not perfect and when i took it off this hose there it looks like it's been kinked a little bit because i had to i had to bend it round to come round so that looks like it's been kinked a bit which could have been some more problems with it getting too hot when i was the drag strip and stuff um, so what I've decided to do i'm binning this off i'm capping that and capping that like it was before and i'm putting the the um, standalone oil cooler for the DSG back on, but what I'm going to do is I've still got the, the cooler and all the lines and everything, and the adapter plate where you take the heat exchanger. And I put all that back on, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to get an inline thermostat. It still won't warm it up properly because then you haven't got the coolant warming it up, but hopefully, with a little bit of driving, I'll be able to get it up quicker. The problem was before when I was trying to do the basic sets, I was literally driving it. Um, driving it quite hard and I bring it back and I still couldn't get the temperatures in there I ended up getting like a hot air going trying to get it on the oil cooler at the front and stuff it was a right nightmare so I'm hoping 
because the beat base extends in the gun, it's got the TVS stage 4 in it, and the gearbox is much better. Hopefully, if we do the thermostatic thing, we won't have to do the basic settings no more. And I mean, I always warm it up properly anyway, because of just because the engine's built and everything. It's not something I, don't, I generally don't daily drive it. I might drive it around a little bit locally sometimes, but I always let it warm up first. So I'm hoping with that, put the cooler on and putting the uh, thermostat in, I'm going to get an inline inline oil cool, um, oil thermostat so it just recirculates it until it gets up to like say 92 degrees um, and then it'll open up and go through the cooler so i'm going to redo all that i'll bring you over in a minute i'll show you like where it went to and stuff like that and and all this all the stuff i've took off really i mean there's a massive stuff and you got all the wiring and like the fuse and stuff like that and like i said that when that fuse blew i don't even know how long that fu like, that fuse has been blown for that could have been blown for a while um, so it's just like there's so many little risky bits and problems and it's just, it's just a hassle so we're going to go air to air but I'll bring you over a little bit closer you can have a look about what I was talking about a minute ago and then uh, I'll show you all the stuff we took off um, and then go from there really obviously there'll be other videos where I put the uh, intercooler on I haven't ordered one yet because I want to build it up a little bit um, we've got another rad as well so I'll show you that in a sec but yeah let's bring you over and show you and then we'll get back to it Right, so obviously the heat exchanger is what I was talking about here. So the, the pump that so came off, came off this bottom hose, which should be um, the cold side of the radiator. Um, it came off loop round, it was bracketed on the front of the gearbox and it came up and went to this, this side here and then it came out and returned back round. So obviously I'm going to take all of this back off and put the original plate back on, inline thermostat somewhere and then oil, DSG oil cooler somewhere there. I want to do the intercooler first before I put that back on. Uh, just because I don't know where it's going. Uh, obviously, air filter that's going to come off. We're going to have a proper intake that comes around now. Um, I don't know exactly where the pipe work's going to go, but it seems like most people come off, go and go around. I might have to relocate some stuff or whatever, but we'll work that as we go along. Um, Mishimoto Rad. So when I first built it, I thought, oh, I'll get a bigger, I'll get a bigger Rad uh just to just to deal with it uh, i ordered it in january and after it being delayed um i ended up just putting the car back together without it and i ain't had no problem and then randomly the other day it turned up so yeah i ordered it in january and it turned up in october so i actually completely forgot i even ordered and paid for this so while i've got it all stripped out even though i'm not having heating problems i might as well just put it on anyway so i have got that um as for what I took off, obviously this was the, the auxiliary pump I was using to try and pump the coolant through the heat exchanger for the DSG. So I'm just chucking all that off and all the wiring. Uh, the wiring for both of them's here for that pump. This was the other pump I was using. It's meant to be a decent pump, but I just don't think it's meant to hold um, when, it, when it gets back pressure. It's meant to be like a free flow pump. So I took all them off. That was the heat exchanger I had. And then obviously the water to air cooler, but this is a reservoir I had. Obviously it was only uh, 0.75 of a litre, so it was tiny, and I left no air gap at the top. I think that's why when it got hot, I think it blew the fuse. So I just think it can't, it can't handle it. Um, this is the the relay kit, two go into one because obviously it did that pump and it did this pump as well, um, and the heat exchanger's off. So all of that's off now. I'm going to sell with the heat exchanger set up. Um, just. Keep that pump to one side in case I ever need it. Uh, Mishimoto rad's going on. And then, yeah, just a big cooler. Obviously, oil cooler, DSG cooler's going to go on there. Big front mount, air to air. And just the pipe work's going to be the hardest bit, but we'll deal with it. But, yeah, that's pretty much where I'm at right now. Right, so that'll be it for this video. Uh, just thought I'd give you guys a little update. Because last time I had loads of plans, um, like I said, we did go drag strip. I did get a clip from inside the car. I think there was one outside the car as well. Um, I only got an outside video of it doing 11.6, I think it was. But the best time I did was 11.2. I've got an interior one of it doing 11.2. There was also a little video of me leaving the drag strip where it spat some flames out and stuff. So I'll try and get them videos in and put it at the end. But I just wanted to give you a quick update. I will do another video when the intercooler's mounted up and we go through and the Mishimoto rad's on and everything. But for now, I just wanted to give you an update of where it was. Um, I also just wanted to say as well, if you are looking to do water to air yourself, don't let this necessarily put, put you off, but just let it be a lesson that you need to take the right route in the fact that um, get, the, get the biggest, the biggest water to air intercooler you can get and go for a big reservoir and go for a decent pump. See, I think my heat exchanger was all right because um, it was quite thin and it was dual pass. 
I think a lot of my, my one of my biggest problems was is the small reservoir. If I had a bigger one, it would have been better. And then the core wasn't massive. If you're doing something like on a Mark II or maybe even a Mark IV, if you've relocated a battery and that, you, you'll have enough room to, to get a big one. Um, and it also depends on the brand as well. I was speaking to a guy who makes bespoke ones because I was at, when I was actually talking about changing over, and he was saying that a problem with a lot of the generic Chinese ones is the core in them is just an air-to-air -air core, which he said does work. If you get a really big one, it does work to an extent, but he says it's not, as that you can get a much smaller one with the same efficiency if it's got a core that's made for water-to-air rather than air-to-air, because -air, obviously the air-to-air -air is meant to have air passing through it, not fluid. Um, so you can run a smaller one and that's what I was looking at doing. I was looking at getting one a similar size but just with a better core. But then it was it then it came down to the fact that I'd need a bigger reservoir and I can't fit a bigger reservoir here to get a decent size one. I'd have to put it in the boot, then you've got to run hoses front to back, maybe an additional pump. I don't know if you need an additional pump or not. But either way, I didn't want to put the tank in the back. I've already got meth in there and the um the surge tank, the fuel surge tank. So I didn't want another. I didn't want another tank in there. So I just decided that I was. Just, I just don't want the hassle. It's just the ease as well. Like with it blowing fuels with all the electrics and shit like that. Um, yeah, I just thought I, I just want the ease. So at least then once it's on, as long as we ain't got boost leak, I ain't got to worry about it again. And that's ideally what I want. So yeah, don't necessarily let it put you off. But I will admit it is a lot of hassle and stress and there's, a, there's so many moving parts whereas once you put an air to air intercooler on it, as long as it doesn't leak and it's got flow to it and it's big enough and got a decent core, that's it, you're done. Uh, you ain't got to worry about it again. So yeah, just, just something to think about. No, don't necessarily let it put you off, but just, just, just think about it properly before you do it. But yeah, I'll try and put any clips in I had from before that I've missed out. Um, but yeah, like, share, subscribe, all that good stuff and I'll meet you on the next one. Peace.